Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Brew and Build. Today we are doing another time lapse type of episode. Wasn't originally planning for this to be a time lapse, but as the Nether update has actually already come out, um, I had started this this project and then was kind of like, oh well, uh, maybe we should do some Nether content instead. So I decided let's make this a, a sort of a time lapse episode. And uh, it, it's pretty good because it ended up being quite a big project to tackle. Now what we're doing is expanding this area down here as you see, and we're, we're building up the dock area a bit more. I figured this area is gonna be quite a big shipping area, and so why not make that a big part of our dock area? So this whole entire section we're working on is purely for shipping crates or like cargo crates. Uh, if you know like the giant, like typically I think they're like blue and red metal uh, in, our, in our world. Um, but what I decided to do is go ahead and make it so that they are a little bit more medieval um, and a little bit more steampunky. And I think it looks really good. The end result is really, really cool. Um, we do have some new texture changes that we're going to go over as well just to kind of suit this area but right now we're just doing some groundwork oh and say goodbye to this island because i was kind of like looking at it and i was like i don't think ships would actually be able to like maneuver around our bay area and then this is just making a color palette for our the wall portion that leads down into the water. We don't actually do this because I, as I was building it, I was kind of thinking, you know, we're going to get blackstone and we should probably try and incorporate blackstone into this area. And so we're going to try and do that. I think and maneuver it into that color palette, maybe take out the dark oak planks and just kind of, you know, just interweave it. I figure, you know, a new block. And it is the nether port city, so we should incorporate some more nether stuff into the builds. Now here we are just building up the dock area right next to the portal. Um, I kind of thought originally that I wanted to go down to the water down there, but then I decided, you know what, let's bring the docks up and then we can always like mess with it later if we want to. And now we are just laying out where we're gonna be putting these cargo crates and I think we and I don't remember how many we actually have. There's quite a few that we have, uh, and some of them actually stack up two or three tall. Uh, I wanted to do uh, do this to have some depth in the build, uh, because like when you're viewing it on the ground and stuff, just one level is not that interesting. Um, and so here's the first texture change. I don't need to really go over it too much. The front of the furnace is the same, but the sides are now default vanilla. Uh, and I'm gonna change the bottom as well to be default vanilla. I just like the texture, I think it looks good. Um, and so we're gonna be getting into just building up this singular crate right here. I figured let's do a little slowdown so you can kind of see the process. And here's a good look at the first block that I have changed. Uh, the cartography table now has the vertical vertical like planks all on, on every single side and I adjusted the top. So let's take a look at that really quick. Um, there's also a new texture for the dark oak trap door, as you will see. So here's a good look at all three textures that have changed. The furnace, very simple. The cartography table, this is one texture that is on the side. I just made it so it appears on all the sides and fixed the top so the globe does not go off the edge. And the dark oak trap door, I've changed again because of a few different things, but I really like what it looks like now. So the main reason why I've changed the Dark Oak Trap Door is because I didn't like how it played with, you know, vanilla Minecraft. Like before we had a window in it and vanilla does not. And so the use case for it was different than what I would use it for in vanilla textures. And so I, I've kind of gotten into the mindset of I want my textures to be able to be turned off and the use case to not change that much. Um, now some textures of course will be exceptions, but for the most part I want them to be pretty simple um, when it comes to changing them. And so this texture, it brings in the gold of the old sort of texture of the dark oak uh, door, the regular door. 
Um, I think I may play around with changing the actual door as well to incorporate gold, but I do like this new incorporation and I think it's good because it can be used for, I think, a lot more. Uh, before we could only, I, could, I felt like I could only use it as like a window almost, and that was not the purpose of the retexture. Uh, so I've gone back and made it a, a solid wood surface and I think it looks really nice. And the gold honestly I think fits in with this steampunk aesthetic but also almost feels a little bit higher end, almost feels like a nicer type of trapdoor. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully you guys like it. I do. I think it looks really good, especially in this build in specific. I can see myself using the trapdoor a lot more often than I have been in the past. Um, but. Needless to say, I think it's a nice change. Now, as we are continuing building, I mean, I am just going ham on the tops here. We're using the smoker for pretty predominantly. And I gotta say the smoker, like this build took so much stone and cobblestone. Uh, it was actually pretty ridiculous. I did not really realize how much uh, the smoker and the furnaces and stuff would cost in terms of cobblestone. Um, it's pretty, yeah, I, I just did not realize. So I, there's a lot of cutting that I had to do because I had to go through and break a lot of my stone. I went through my entire pickaxe, my entire regular pickaxe, not silk touch, and had to make like manually make cobblestone because I ran out completely. I went through like two and a half shulker boxes or something like that of cobblestone just for the smokers and furnaces. Pretty insane. But here we are building up the second story version. So only a few of them have second like ones on top. Um, and so that's just to create depth, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And so that when you are on the backside where that wall is, that's gonna be sort of a platform like where all our other houses are. Um, I wanted you to be able to tell what the area was without having to actually like walk up and look down. And so you can, you'll be able to see there's a few that are stacked up three tall and it actually looks actually really cool. These, they stack vertically very well. And I wanted, I tried to make it so it looked like they would interlock in. And so you'll see later there's one that is up in the air that is being taken to a ship. And I think it overall turned out really, really nice. So there is the third story that we're getting into and I decided to make a little bit of a story in this area as well because you know it's not as fun to have just a bunch of crates stacked up so I've kind of thought of like you know a lot of movies games and stuff like the shipyard area is generally like lower end in terms of the class and so I started making people live here and so we've got some of these like just bed mats and stuff hidden around in the lower crates uh, and that's specifically I put in the lower crates this one's a little bit bougier they've got a desk and a full-on bed um, and I think it, it turned out really, really nice. I made this like little, I planned out this little area that's in between all the tall stacked ones to make it so that they had like a little conclave almost. And so we've got like a campfire. Of course, it's kind of like these sort of situation where like, you know, people could kick them out, but they're gonna just go somewhere else and loiter around there. So they they don't really bug people here. So they don't really mess with kicking them out, because in reality, they like they generally they just pull from the top on these stacked crates, and so they've kind of gotten wise and they've learned that oh they just pull from the top. So we'll just live in the bottom ones of the of the three stacked one versions, and they'll be fine. So we've got this little campsite, got a little like upper walkway area and I think overall it looks very cool. It's almost kind of fallouty. It makes me think of fallout. I don't really know why, but I think it's a very cool introduction to just adding a little spice of lore, not really much of anything in terms of like groundbreaking background, but it's a fun thing to add nonetheless. And as I said, we are making a flying one. Now this one, it's it itself is not flying. We've got something carrying it that is honestly one of the coolest I think designs I've come up with just on the fly. I do have to, I can't take like all credit for some of the design because it's the uh, sort of, it's a little bit of a helicoptery, steampunk helicopter thing. Um, and some of the design comes from what I've seen Vigo Man do in his steampunk city on the Legacy SMT. Um, and so we've got this crane that's come down and it's attached to this flying machine. Um, and it is, uh, it was interesting because it's a even, flying machine so I can't really 
do like just a singular line and so i think it it's made it a little bit more interesting shape but that kind of like it's a good challenge it's a nice challenge to have so we've got a backwards propeller and then two helicopter type blades up on the top uh, using the smoker to kind of look like engines as well and so it's open air and stuff it's not something they would be doing during the rain or if they are then it kind of probably is a crappy job but that's okay I got some levers and stuff to fly it around and then I end up putting a campfire just to show that it is steam powered because this is the steampunk city and so there we have it. This area is now done and dusted. Of course, I do have to do the groundwork and stuff, but that's okay. I really love how this has turned out. There is a floating rectangle that you just saw past that is going to be another flying cart that is taken off, but just didn't have time to build that. But I really love how this area has turned out. If you guys are interested in potentially seeing this build as a tutorial, I tried to slow it down so you could, but let me know if you like find it interesting and you would like a tutorial tutorial on how to build this ship and crate. It's very easy, not too hard, wouldn't take very long. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love this little camping area. I think it looks really great. That yellow banner is actually something interesting. We'll take a look at it here in just a second. It actually is a little garden area so they can grow their own food because they're too cheap to not cheap but too poor to be able to, you know, buy it. So they have like potatoes and these and beetroots. And so I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, leave a like in real life. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye